The Retro Buzz starts right after this. And we are live. I almost forgot how to do this. It's been uh, been a little bit too long, but we're back. We got the Retro Buzz live here with episode number 40, and we've got with us Mr. Glenn Planamento back on Earth. I am, with all my games behind me finally, copying <laughs> your uh, your way. Listen, there, <laughs> there's, it. No, there's no such thing as copying. People like to say that, but it's not. It's there's copyright. No copy. It's emulation. Emulation. Oh, I was not prepared for that. <laughs> that was a little too much. I'm literally almost crying now. Um, thank you, Glenn. Thank you very much for that rendition of uh, Alvin and the Chipmunks. That was amazing. <laughs> <laughs> then we have the we have the birthday boy with us, Mr. Doug Smith. How old are you now? 30, 30 what? 35, 36? Yeah, 21. 36. 36. 21, 35, you know, 36 years old. 36 he's, years young. I mean, I still go to the toilet. I, I'm a grown man that walks into the toy aisle. First thing he goes to the store. Um, people are like, oh, you need help finding something for your kid? I'm like, yeah, my kid. Yeah, my kid. But uh, yeah, 36 years young. So appreciate the birthday wishes and all the kind words I've got from people today. I, I greatly appreciate it, guys. Yeah, it's great to have you here and take the time to, to speak with us, uh, hang out with us and talk gaming. And we've also got this guy. He's I, here. He's stoked. <laughs> I'm playing the new Mario game. Oh, Mario how you like Journey. it so far? I love it. Mm -hmm. I'm playing Mario Galaxy. That's like the only one I played. So, Daniel, let's get into that real quick and talk about this. He got he started playing this, and Doug and I were kind of like, oh, really? He said you can't use it as a controller. You can't. You can't connect it to your Switch because... It's just like the original uh, uh, Galaxy, Mar Super Mario Galaxy. You have to use these Joy-Cons to detach from your Switch. So that's a big bummer, but that's the only way you could control Mario. That That is kind of like... A... <sighs> I don't like that. <laughs> I mean, I, I got my copy today. I have yet to open it, but... Um... I already don't like hearing that. It's, it's kind of a bummer. I, I, I mean, if that's the case, then it is. I mean, I guess it makes sense because you know that's the way it originally was. But I'm like, mm, I don't want to do that. I, don't, I like don't run like, that game. I like having my switch like that. Don't run yeah, that so game I'm... on a hacked uh, unit. Oh, Glenn, oh that's you, don't, not. you don't know what you're talking about, it. Glenn. <laughs> well, it, so okay, so let's talk about that for a second. So. Like, like like everybody else, we I pre-ordered two of them. I, I, even though everybody's like, oh, Best Buy's going to cancel your order, I got two of them. I bought one for myself, one for my son, and my wife and I all share. She really wants to play Nintendo Super Mario 64. That mm -hmm. was her big That was her big one. I really want to play Sunshine because I haven't played Sunshine in, like, since the GameCube first came out. I had that game. Yeah. So I'm, I'm interested in playing that. Uh, Glenn. Hey, now you don't have to buy it for the GameCube. True, true, and that's really expensive. Glenn, what do you think about the them bringing the 64 Mario to the uh, Switch? Does that entice you to open up your Switch? <laughs> For the first time? Yes, yeah, uh, that thing's still pristine in the box, you know? It hasn't been touched. You know, but, but I am in a Nintendo mood as of late. You now, I was talking to you about it the other day. I actually took out my GameCube right here, and... Uh, I modified it, and the modification went well, 
but I'm a little disappointed with the unit itself because first of all, it's disappearing. It's like, it's like a spirit right now. Yeah, I was like, what is but, going uh, on? The 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 plastic, I guess, didn't age too well because I, if you know me, I'm very delicate with working on these things. Took the screws out, marked out where the screws went. When I went to put them back in, probably a good five or six of them kind of cracked, and I got the little right Ooh. there. So now I got to repair those posts. But um, to to modify the GameCube, I only spend about you know ten dollars on a for the Xeno chip. You mm -hmm. solder it right on the board, and then on the bottom here, right when you go to the bottom of your console, there's a little slot here. We get this little board. We can put a micro SD card slot in, or you could do it right in the front of the unit by getting one of these SD cards, doing it that way. So it's a total of ten dollars to do it, but now I'm still ticked that <laughs> you should have bought one. You should have bought one at a, like a, yeah, a good you know roll or something. And you know me, yeah. and that's what I always do. Yep. This time I'm like, nah, it's not gonna be a big modification. I'll just do this. Now, the only one. Um, <laughs> I was actually on Thingiverse finding 3D printed uh, like tops, but there's no bottoms. And so if anyone knows of a source for GameCube shells, like colored shells, because like the N64, you know, and the other Nintendo consoles, they started releasing other colors. Right. Um, I'm just disappointed now that I got those posts. It's always in my brain now that the posts are not right. Like my brain. So what are you just gonna right. you are are you just gonna super glue it and then hope that it it holds or well, are you gonna try to three D print it? The plan I'm gonna it? do right now, you know how you have uh, shrink tubing? Yes. They have mm -hmm. different sizes. I'm gonna put some shrink tubing on there, not shrink it yet, but just put it on there. And I was gonna put in either like bondo or an epoxy, just let it slide down just to get the size right. Then I'll pre-drill a hole. So it's it's fixable, but you know the console is pristine, and for the the post just disintegrate when the same screw went in the exact same spot and it just went and cracked. Well, I think you. I think almost, you learned. It's almost a Kathleen Kennedy level annoyance. Almost. <laughs> I, think, I think. I think you learned. Don't mess with your good one. <laughs> use use yeah. another right. one. Right. Yeah, that's that's it. That's and, it. Isn't that always the way it happens though? Anytime you start something, it's going to be like a simple project. It snowballs and turns into this cat catastrophic oh crap well i gotta fix this or this broke and now this ten dollar project is a fifty dollar project yep. or this 30 minute job is now a four and a half hour seven eight job. nine yeah that's basically seven eight nine that's exactly what happened i just steamrolled into a disaster like this ended up being but the good part <laughs> is the gamecube's got quality games and it works seven eight nine nothing <laughs> well so so what you're saying is if you bought one of these you're essentially getting a kathleen kennedy remix because people are complaining about this <laughs> Mm -hmm. They're complaining well, about they, this yeah, and saying it's, it's emulated. It's all emulation. From, yeah, why right. not the original ROM? That's right. Why is it? Why is it emulated, right. Nintendo? What are you doing? Right. It was not. They didn't recreate it. Like a lot of times when they do these remastered editions, they will literally recreate the game, new code, mm -hmm. do it the right way. I don't necessarily have a problem with it being emulated. If you got good frames per second, and apparently even N64, the graphics are enhanced a little bit, looks a little bit sharper. So I don't have a, a problem necessarily with that but uh not that i hacked my 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 uh <laughs> unit is not hacked it's still in the box hey i was gonna say you have, probably haven't mine. even taken the wrapper off of your uh, no. of your copy no, of switch launch day His launch day fresh in the switch <laughs> what it is <laughs> but there are people obviously who do that you know and i don't know if nintendo did it on purpose to detect a hacked unit but apparently it's going to crash a unit uh or potentially could crash a unit so just be careful if you do have one that might be modified. That's Nintendo for you. I mean, if it doesn't crash your unit, you'll have a knock on the door. Right. You know, either way, totally within the right. I mean, if your machine's online, I mean, Xbox, I think, was the people who really started with that. You know, if you modified your Xbox and they determined you were, you were banned and the machine yeah. was banned. And I get that. I mean, they're protecting their, their rights and their consoles. And we always complained in the retro community, a lot of times we hacked and got ROMs because... They weren't they weren't reselling them anymore, right? You couldn't get them anymore. Well, now they're doing it. So I have no problem with them protecting their property in those cases. When they are re-releasing, you know, games that they couldn't get before on a new platform, they're well, well within their right to do so. Just mm -hmm. telling you, like when you go on a first date with someone, bring protection. Except for you, Glenn, <laughs> not <Wow>. having a date. <laughs> no, no, he actually had 
He actually yeah. had a few dates this week, believe it or not. No, he no. did. He seriously did. He had. <laughs> I did. Uh, he did. He did. Why? What? What? <laughs> they, wa- they watched the show and they, they wanted to go they? out with them. What were they? I don't know. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Dude. Just want to take a second and give a shout out to the, the Super Chats. We got one from Daniel May and another one from P-Dubs wishing me a happy birthday. So thank you, guys. I greatly appreciate that. <laughs> I Very... don't have any dates. I'm only eight. All Super That's Chats today should go to Doug's birthday gift. No. We what what no. what we what we could we get him? We could get him. Nope. No. He already has that. Me, he probably me, has two or me, three of those. Yeah. Let me just stop you there. No. <laughs> yeah. You don't want yourself, say, a I don't know, ten inch or fifteen inch tall. What was it now? Um, those robots I was telling you about last time. Oh, one from the, was from the Iron Giant. Oh. The other one was from for aha. See, he, see? he already has it. Look, he's looking up. Here yeah. he has it. I was up, I'm looking up at my Iron Giant. Um. But I mean, wait, he wait. Need another robot in their life. We have to yeah, ask no, you, exactly. Doug. We have to ask you because we didn't we didn't have a show last week. We have to ask you about the Millennium Falcon that you bought, the big one. How? What was what was the response of your wife when she saw this four hundred dollar toy sitting in her dining room, hanging in the dining room, right up, right below the chandelier? Yeah. Well, I wasn't. I, I wasn't able to figure out a rigging system, so I haven't had it hung it from the ceiling yet. I did put it on the, the <laughs> dining room table, and she was like, what the hell is that? I'm like, this is, this is our new baby. I'm like, do you like it? <laughs> and she's like, how much did you pay for that? I'm like, before I tell you that, I'm like, let me show you all the cool features. So I give her like the used car salesman type of thing where I like walk around the Millennium Falcon. I'm like, let me tell you about these features. You know, it's got AM, FM radio, six to CD changer, leather interior, you know, give, give her the whole spiel. And then she's it like, did the Whoa. Kessel run in less than 32 parsecs. I mean, exactly. come on. Exactly. I'm like, it's got sound effects from the old trilogy and the new trilogy. It comes with action uh, figures. I'm like, it's got six forks. Count them. One, two, three, four, five, six. You know, and that, that really helps seal the deal. And then I told her the price and she just looked at me and said I was an idiot. So, I mean, that's that, <laughs> It was pretty much wait, the wait. experience I was expecting. Speaking of birthdays, mm-hmm. I know what we should get Glenn's for his birthday. That's a long Uh-oh. time from now. A girlfriend. Oh, <laughs> a order bride. I think they're about twenty thousand dollars for those. Uh, oh, here we go. Uh, we'll just we'll stop it there, right? So, <laughs> so with that, she mm-hmm. she you're still alive. She didn't kill you. You still have. Yeah, it. I liked it. I- yeah. Um, we have an, an odd setup to where me and my wife have separate bank accounts, so we don't have to like share the finances. So when I go and make a stupid, oh, <laughs> genius, purchase, um, a four hundred dollar Millennium Falcon, I don't have to ask for permission. I just kind of have to ask for forgiveness when I'm like sneaking it in the door and it like because it has to go well, somewhere I, in the house. I don't think she was mad per se about the cost because she understands you're a collector. Yeah, I think she was more mad like that thing is like if you guys didn't see it, go over to it's Doug's huge. Instagram. Yeah, yeah. That thing is it's huge. Great. Yeah, it was even bigger than I anticipated. It's one of those things like you can see the pictures of it, but then I, like I opened up the door when the, the UPS guy dropped it off and rang the doorbell, and I was like, "Ah, crap! That's uh, that's easily like twenty five percent bigger than I was anticipating." <laughs> as I looked down at this giant box, and then I was like, "Well, that's geez, usually yeah. the response I get. Like, it's it's my wife will always say like, okay, gamers are the only ones that can get away with hoarding because it's collecting, but she doesn't like mm-hmm. she doesn't like the big stuff." around like where are you gonna put it and i start mentioning it goes outside of this room and then she's like oh no 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 you have to find a place inside the room or you're not getting it type of thing that's kind of the ground rules i've been set like i've got all the nerdy stuff upstairs in different rooms downstairs where we're civilized normal individuals except for like when company comes over we're still super nerds and i'm like oh time to whip out the fine china and i give everybody like these plastic little land before time cups that came from pizza hut in 1984 and like some <laughs> aladdin dinner plates you know we're we're real fancy in that way but everything else my wife's like no you can't have any nerdy stuff downstairs that's that's the adult area of the house well the one good thing is something like that it's a collectible you can keep out all year i just blew yeah. 400 bucks on a couple of halloween decorations Hey, that, you didn't that's bigger than my dining room table, yeah. you know? Yeah. At least that's something you can enjoy. Halloween yeah. is the best holiday there is. So, I mean, th- in, in my humble opinion, that is a worthwhile investment. I mean, that's the gift that keeps on giving. You, you don't have to take those decorations down. Like, if you got, you know, beef with the mailman, Glenn, you set that stuff up, hide it a little bit on the porch, give them a little jolt. They'll take better care always, of your packages. It's always fun watching Blue when I take this out because he 
absolutely hates the ball. He wants to like kill them. <laughs> That's uh, you saw my response to you, Glenn, on on it on Twitter. Yep. You said, "Am yep. I crazy?" I was like, "Yeah, pretty much." For buying three hundred dollars. <laughs> Simple. Of that. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Well, I, I I admit every Halloween I take a week off from work to set up the whole house. I have projectors. I got these animatronics. I dig up some corpses. I lay them around the lawn. It takes time. <laughs> it sounds you, like what, you got an Indian, Indian burial ground in the backyard there, Glenn. He probably does. Some, uh, sounds like you're I burying up your. I can't talk wife's... about it. You know, <laughs> cannot confirm. That's what the guys get mad. That's that's. I mean, that's pretty interesting. All right, let's let's kind of move. Let's switch gears here. We got uh, Michael B. The Gate. He said that was a good. He's telling you it was a good investment. So there you go. Yeah. Um, that's all I needed to hear. So let's talk about the big debacle. That's that's the. It's it's not like it's on the lower third or anything. You know, it's the elephant yeah. in the room. Let's talk about this here. PS Five versus Xbox, and I titled it this way only because of the way the pre orders went. Doug. Uh, you were, uh, you they, managed they you managed to get one, so what happened? I was I was fortunate enough to just like be on the internet at the right time because the way it unveiled is like Sony had their big little you know presentation <laughs> online where they're showing off the new games and everything. Great presentation in my opinion. I liked what I saw, and then they're like, "All right, pre-orders going to go live tomorrow. We'll let you know when." And previously, prior to that, they had already sent out like this special email sign up thing for people to be like the first to know when pre-orders are going live, and then. Like not two hours later, retailers just started going rogue and like started selling pre-orders without notice. Like Walmart was the first; they sold out in like 20 minutes, and then Best Buy and Target jumped in, and then it was like I think Newegg and Amazon. It was just like dominoes because everyone was like rushing to these websites, trying to pre-order them. If they got lucky, you know, they got into the first like 10 minute window, they were able to get one, which is great. Otherwise, they were getting a lot of error messages or they would put the PS5 in their cart and they wouldn't let them check out. Just all sorts of issues. I, like had, I had that website, problem with Best Buy. Yeah. I had that problem. GameStop's website legitimately thought it was under a cyber attack because it was getting so much, you know, saw... flooded traffic to it <laughs> that it had like this, you know, you have been blocked message on their main screen the moment you <laughs> typed it in because it was literally shutting them down. And they had to like take the website down for 10 minutes to try to recode it and, you know, handle the extra traffic. And of course... In typical GameStop fashion, they come back and said, "Hey, we got you know PlayStation Five, but we're going to bundle it for seven hundred ninety nine dollars." Oh well, man, I really you know, you know, off when they do that. That stuff. was ridiculous. I would not pay for that. Yeah, the, I mean, that's the, why the I hate I is... hate pre orders to begin with. I just hate it because of what just happened here. But then when they start saying, "Yeah, we got them," we're going to sell all this other garbage you don't want to get it. <laughs> yeah. Pretty much. I mean, the, the bright side is like you can return a lot of that stuff typically to GameStop. So like you pick up your pre store and it's like, all right, I want to return this, this and this. And the guy just groans at you. But I'm like, if you wouldn't, you know, try to screw me over with an $800 bundle when all I wanted was the $400 system, then we wouldn't be having this discussion, guy. But, you know, that's so that's the why the why and the reasons GameStop are, you know, struggling like they are. And of course, Xbox, um, they took, you know, note of all this fiasco and everything. And they tweeted out, hey, don't worry. Uh. You can pre-order the Xbox coming on uh, September 22nd at 8 a.m. You know, on this website, this website, and this website. You know, they were very open and clear, and there's none of this, you know, surprise pre-orders type of thing. They just laughed at the Sony debacle, and, you know, they're just going to reap the benefits of it and not get as much negative publicity as Sony has been taking these last 48 hours. You know what I love about Sony and Microsoft? is each launch, one's able to spit in the other one's face with a bad launch. When you had the, was it the Xbox One? When they were saying you couldn't you couldn't use used games on there, right? It was like, you couldn't bring your games over. Sony was sure, oh yeah, we're fine with that, man, do it. Yeah. You know, Microsoft got slapped in the face. So this is how it happened. Microsoft's like, mm, oh, it's our turn now. Hey. We're going to do it right. We're not going to screw you over like Sony just did. But that's a so first, So I find that though. more entertaining than the launch itself. But yeah. but that's a the, first, the, though. The, the political mudslinging back and forth. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Because Sony's usually ahead. Sony usually has it together. The only thing that they didn't do well was uh, the online presence, right, with the online yeah. gaming. Xbox, they're not going to take that from Xbox. Everybody knows that. If you think that Sony's online experience is better, well, sorry yeah. for you. But um, just triple protect your account. Yeah, it's stolen. But to, but hey, I mean, 
if you don't mind having your identity stolen, you got a free like twenty dollar game as an apology. Oh uh, yeah, I mean, <laughs> I, I was one of those people. And, and it, but but hey, but Doug, you'll spend the next two two years watching your credit report because you know, <laughs> and all the entertainment and and the expense yeah. that you probably went through to lock your credit. I mean, you know, it, it, it happens. All your money is nice just back ended. All yeah. your money yep. every time you sp like spend some money, it just goes. Like this is how much you have right now, down, down, down. Yeah, they'll keep. Yeah. Well, money in Falcon. But, but see, that's the other thing too, right? So mm -hmm. Xbox had had the Game Pass. Yep. Then Sony came out. Well, I forget what they're calling it now, but they're doing something a lot similar. Similar. Yeah. Right, and they're saying, "Oh, well, you can play all your PS. I think PS4 games. I think <laughs> yeah, there's a lot of the, they went the all heavy hitting." PS4 titles basically is like a lot of their big success stories of this generation. You said, Hey, you, you can download these and play them, you know, instantly on day one with PS5, yep. which is, you know, their version of the Game Pass. And it's also something they, they're trying to, in my opinion, um, facilitate a fill in because honestly, there's not a whole lot of launch titles. No. I mean, and and that's, and that goes to the that's question. Kind of typical. So Eminem wrote in the chat here, I'm going to pull this up here. He wrote this on here. He said, Stephen, did you pre-order the PS5? I did not. Three times, just for the sake of doing it, I had it in my cart, and I went to hit checkout, and they weren't sold out, and it kept coming up with an error. It says it can't it can't process, it can't go forward or whatever it was saying. It was in red letters. It wouldn't go past that screen. So I was like, forget it. And I, it, you guys know, even from the beginning, I was not very compelled to get it launch day, that or Xbox, because there's nothing... That really jumped out at me, except the Spider-Man game. That was the only game that jumped out at me that it, said, hmm, it, that looks really good, but it, it do I need it launch day? No, right. you don't. Why can't you just get it like... <laughs> yeah, Dad. Like, yeah, I, like I'm amazed to hear that later. from Daniel, first of all. A week later. Oh, a week later. You hear him, guys. A <laughs> week <laughs> later. After the launch day. He's showing day. you how patient he is at his young age. Yeah. He, he, you uh, stunned him. Look at that. <laughs> <laughs> like, just why not a week? Well, it's not so yeah. much a week. You You're guys, gonna be waiting a month. I don't know if you guys read. There was there was a super chat here from Nathan Henderson, just wishing Cool Toy happy birthday, and he gave you a super chat to go towards your Millennium Falcon payment. Ah, thank you so much, Nathan. I appreciate that. I appreciate that greatly. Thanks, so, man. So, um, Doug, sounds like you mm -hmm. have the great wife. Because she yells at you almost every day from spending like so much money, and what are you gonna do about it? I'm going to compliment the the cake she made um, for my birthday <laughs> to no nice. end, and tell her how beautiful she is and how much she is greatly appreciated. Because I'm not a fool, and I like sleeping inside and not outside. <laughs> <laughs> so you just lo yeah. love spending money by collecting. Yes, and I'm going to. Admit right now that I will be trying to buy an Xbox pre-order next week as well. I was just um, gonna say. So, are you gonna actually go with both consoles right from right out of the gate? Yeah, and I will be the first to admit I I have zero argument as to why I'm doing it, other than the fact that I just feel like I need them both. I don't really need them both because there's nothing really on both of them that's like the Halo game. Is the main reason I was, you know, excited for the new Xbox, and then it got delayed. So I'm like, until huh. 2022, I heard now. Yeah, so yeah. I'm like, okay, well, uh, I mean, I'm gonna eventually get it, but like, uh, I'm like you, there, there wasn't a whole lot of these launch title games right out of the gate that are like really I'll, singing to me. Besides Spider Man, I'll be honest, a lot of the Switch games that are coming out in 2021, <laughs> I am so glad I bought it because this is just one side. If they do a Zelda like this, all next year, I mean, they Ooh. did, they did. So confirm a, so a, a switch pro now i don't know if that's going to be something that's going to use different games which i would imagine Ooh, i can't wait to get that and leave that in the box he's going to leave that oh in the wait box. oh wait wait <laughs> what if it comes with retro games listen rgt85 he did a video on it i didn't get a chance to watch it my power went out and i was scrambling to get the show back up after the power came back on so rgt you'll have to watch his video if you didn't watch it uh good friend of the show so rgt85 did a video on it and talked about they did confirm it i that's as much as i know because that's what his title yeah. says so yeah. um you'll have to go watch that unless doug if you or glenn if you guys got any info on that i don't unfortunately i, I just want to know it. what the box looks like <laughs> so you can so you can put it on top of the other one have them yes. side by side <laughs> yeah 
No, I, I, unless for whatever reason, unless the like the Switch Pro or whatever it ends up being called, um, has physical different games, um, yeah. I'll stick with my day one Switch. Um, I, I'm happy with it. I don't need 4K resolution for my Switch games. Um, I'm just happy playing them portably the way I, they are. And I agree. Know, retro titles like, you know, Mario All, All Stars and things yep. like that, enough to keep me busy for quite a while. Agreed. That, and that's still the biggest thing for the Switch, so I hear, so I don't play it, is you are playing the same game you're playing on your machine, you're taking it with you. You know, mm-hmm. it's not having to be recreated. It's not a drummed down version. You're playing the actual game. So kudos to people actually enjoying it. Yeah, you need. <laughs> I'm telling you, Glenn, everybody in the chat needs to tell. Them. Open, Open it up. up it up. Play this. What are you waiting for? It, it's, it's Link's it's Awakening. Tough. I spent I found everything. Oh, I completed it 100 percent. Look, got all the hearts. You guys have played any Zelda game. He played it on the original CDI machine. OK. Oh, That's what? the only way to enjoy Zelda is on CDI. <laughs> I'm I'm hoping we get a game and watch like we're getting this game and watch Mario. Oh, next year. yeah. When is it? When is that coming here? I didn't pre-order yeah. overseas, uh, but I I pre-ordered overseas just in case. But I'm still planning on. He learned America. from the Turbo Graphics 16 yeah. debacle. He's like, yeah, I know, I know. I didn't pre-order that, that either. I didn't pre-order yeah. either. And if I do get it, I'm leaving it in the box. Yeah, I'm really surprised that yeah. we haven't seen pre-orders for it yet because was it like November 12th is when that was supposed yeah. to come out? It was supposed yeah. to come out. So, I mean, time's ticking. Let's get these pre-orders. Of course, we say that we haven't even seen the arcade one-up uh, Miss Pac-Man Best Buy pre-order go live, and that's been on their website for like a month now. So let's talk about arcade one-up now that you bring that up. So everybody's mm-hmm. been asking arcade one-up, where is um? Oh, they're getting buffer in here. Hang on. It could be. I hope it's not the internet dropping. Well, let's keep going. Um, everybody, yeah, we're still good here. Yeah, everybody's talking about. Okay, everybody's been talking about pinball, mm-hmm. arcade one up pinball. When's it coming? And I happen to see in a in a David McIntosh going back and forth in one of the groups and stating, okay, that it is getting close to the end of the year. It may Definitely. not come until next year wow he somebody what? asked him point gonna blank is him it... a little bit i'm gonna defend him a little bit because of what's going on i mean yeah, yeah i mean my, there is a pandemic would have been out in july and yeah. we're gonna get out in september we're, we're ready we're getting going but it's a small device it's not screens the, the play field they're dealing with a lot more manufacturers it's completely out of their hands i mean they are at the will of other companies making the products that are running behind. It's just a fact. Yeah. I mean, we know how much arcade one up is like been, you know, anticipating the release of this. And this was going to be like their big bell cow this year, their grand release. Um, so if they're not able to pull it out this year and get it out ready for, you know, holiday season, it's not for a lack of trying. Cause I guarantee you it's an all hands on deck approach to get that out there. Like, when we last talked to David, he joked around about, and he was like, we'll get this out if I have to drive that, you know, the 18 wheelers across the country myself. So like, obviously if that's the case and it doesn't happen, it's because circumstances well beyond their control where they legitimately just could not get this stuff in the country and unloaded in time for a retail release for the holiday season. So I hope that doesn't end up being the case, but you know, stranger things have happened, especially with this world pandemic that we're living in right now. So I guess nothing should shock us at this point. I guess anything's possible, right? Shouldn't, I mean, this, we could... mm-hmm. Shouldn't this be yep. like a real life Stranger Things or something? No. Well, either way, either way, I'm I'm curious. But they did deliver. They brought a brand new arcade cabinet out. Well, Doug, you want to kind of roll with that one? Oh yeah, we got some Golden Axe finally. I mean, that was one of those things we saw at CES, and then I said, "Hey, this will be coming out this summer." Originally, was their kind of. Um, initial ETA granted they didn't like ever give it a date or anything they just said you know hopefully this summer and then summer came along and people still didn't see or hear anything about Golden Axe and then we saw the brick pop up pre-orders that said hey you'll have Golden Axe in November but that was only for Canadian customers and not US customers so people started getting the Lancey saying hey Canada's getting in November but we still haven't heard anything about Golden Axe in America then lo and behold we got a nice little beautiful trailer and then we find out that you can pre-order it now exclusively through Arcade One Up's website, 
and the current ETA for that shipping is middle of October. So very soon, right around the corner, and it's got five games, four-player cabinet, you know, and who doesn't love Sega? I know I do. That's Sega! Your, that's, that'll be there you go. I also so. do, too, because it has Sonic. But does it have flash yeah. processing is the question. Right. <laughs> What does what 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 does? I you know Sega does. Sorry, I'm a little. I'm trying to get this stream back up. I was about to say I don't see it live anywhere anymore. It's it is it's live, but it's um I think on Facebook it's live right now. Gotcha. I don't see it on the YouTube. YouTube is live now. So guys, if you're watching this in the middle of the show, you're gonna catch that it was dropped. Um, <laughs> so the magic television, we'll glue it like, together. Hey, I told you we lost. Wait, wait. We lost. Well, no, we still have the recording. So those watching the recording, oh, yeah, it means yeah. nothing to you the guys. Video, video. But you guys, you guys, I, I got to shush my son here, so he lets me talk here. Um, with the taser. This, yeah, I know. I need a cattle prod. <laughs> the show is back up. So if you want to share it out to everybody um, on YouTube, let everybody know it's back. I don't know if. Like I said, we lost power earlier today. I don't know if it was just a hiccup, a glitch in the internet. Doug and Glenn were still here, so nothing dropped there. It might have been the CDN. Who knows? Anything happens when it's live. But um, true. if you missed it, we'll 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 uh, you'll have to go back and watch the part where we talked about the arcade one up stuff. Glenn, what the other part where you were supposed to talk about? We have other stuff from arcade one up, right? That's coming down the pipe. I believe we do. There is. Yeah, <laughs> big Tell buck, me, I big buck it. hunter, and and Miss Pac-Man, man. Come on, well, big that's hunter. on that's on your list. <laughs> yeah, but I can't read. Oh my goodness! <laughs> I mean, I'm older than words. I'm older than print. Dude. Oh come on! <laughs> well, and, and, okay. Did you see that they also have the mini ghosts now and the mini Pac-Man that you can get at like five below? Mm -hmm. Yeah, feature. I saw that. That's kind of neat. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I haven't gotten to five below yet, but you know. That's something that's going to get the soon. I've been getting of, cold. I've been found it myself, but I've been I've been on the hunt because we recently just had a five below open up in the last like two months as a grand opening for the first time. So I was like, eh, maybe they'll have some. But I'm gonna have to check it. Right now, so far, I'm gonna have to check it and um and go. But um, I, you know, yeah, did you guys pre-order Big Buck Hunter? I didn't yet. I have a story I about that. I'm really. Dude. Did you really? It did. Good. I, I I did because it's Best Buy birthday coupon, so it was like ten percent off. So I'm like, if I'm gonna do it, listen, I might as well use it. Listen, up until today, I've been paying for two houses. Mm -hmm. I couldn't pre-order. I have two kids. Uh, yeah. For those that don't know, I when we moved into the new house two years ago, the house that we came from, where the original studio was, has been on the market for two years, and it was just closed on today. So that's gonna free up some money for me. Uh, so well, I can start pre yeah, well, so I can start pre-ordering some of this stuff. You have a whole nother problem because what? your game room's getting full. <laughs> so now, like George Carlin used to say, I'll move it to your you house. buy stuff and you buy a bigger house, and then you buy more stuff and you buy a bigger house. So you're almost due <laughs> for a bigger house. No, I got plenty of room in this house. In fact, can you pre-order a second house? I'll, ta <laughs> <laughs> I'll take over my wife's uh, or our music room or something. I'll I'll figure something out. You, no, you, nice could you. <clears throat> you could just use that money to build another house to make it like no. a game room. Well, no, okay. So Daniel is correct. I did, we I'm looking this way because on camera it makes it look like I'm looking at him. Anyways, we did talk about this. I told him I was thinking about <laughs> getting like a forty by forty one of those sheds that put together and wire electric Boy. to it. A yep. he shed. Yeah, and set it up and move all the arcades and the gaming stuff out there, yeah. make it air conditioned and leave the studio here, but move that out there. And yeah. it'll just well, be like heaven. a regular studio. And then when it's like game nights, we could just yeah. walk outside and go there. And yeah, so that's something that, you know, we're, we've been kind of thinking about. Even if it's winter. Yes. yes. <laughs> that would be fun. Just walk into the studio. So. Let's get into something else real quick uh, with iArcade. I think, uh, Doug, you're going to hit this one up. Um, um, Jong, Jong's back. I saw he was live today. He's back on the yep. air. Um, so, Doug, iArcade's got some new games coming. They did. They signed a deal with uh, Technos, you know, 
famous for things like uh, WrestleFest and Superstars. Unfortunately, those games are not coming, but we are getting some awesome, cool, old-school arcade wrestling games. We're getting Map Mania, getting Tag Team Wrestling, and we're getting uh, Mania Challenge, as well as, uh, was it, like 14 other Technos games. So some really cool ones, some nice uh, beat-em-ups, because that's another thing that Technos is really famous for, is their beat-em-up series. So anxious to see those and excited to continuously see this IA Arcade library expand because they're really, really showing that they've got a lot of different diverse games. They have a, like a new volleyball game on there, like a beach volleyball style game. You got beat em ups, you got wrestling, you got shooters, you got RPGs, you got platformers. So there's a little something for everybody on the IA Arcade, which is you know gonna be something that helps them stand out from the crowd with that expansive library that just keeps growing and growing. And of course, Jong said with a smile that they're not done yet. So look for hopefully more future announcements to come. So Glenn, right, and the good thing, the good thing about that is they're building, uh, you know, corporate connections. So I may not have all the newer games yet, but, but this is how you start. You get your foot yeah, in the door, exactly. exactly. Mm -hmm. And and you never know, RetroSoft Studios, like uh, uh, WrestleFest Two, uh, we had Michael Mana and the guy on. I can't think mm -hmm. of his name. Maybe maybe they'll get that on the IR Arcade. Uh, that would be sweet because I mean, honestly, it's it's not that they didn't try to get Russell Fest or Superstars. Um, those games kind of have a historic yes. reason why they can't be licensed today. Um, one of the obvious ones is uh, the, the was it the tag team demolition. Um, you can't really get their rights right now, and for what I understand, WWE has been a pain to even deal with when they're trying to talk about the rights to that game. So you would have to physically make changes to that existing game just to try to even work around that type of thing. And that's, I mean, that's a significant financial investment there, let alone, you know, the licensing. So unfortunately we're not going to see superstars or Russell Fest, but we also are going to see some amazing arcade games that kind of led the way for those amazing wrestling arcade style games. So I've got a question for Glenn, mm -hmm. since he's a big Neo Geo fan. I know we all like Neo Geo, but Glenn, you really love Neo Geo and, and, uh, New cabinet. Mm -hmm. That's yep. SNK. That's not really by SNK, but it is an SNK. Help. Isn't it because yeah. there's Hang on like a second. Pollen. Hang on a second. So that cabinet's coming. And the IR arcade, the same price. Which one do you pick? <laughs> no, I won't hide the fact that I do like the IR arcade principle, but the machine itself visually never attracted me uh the neo geo to me is just a nicer looking cabinet um now from what i understand though the neo geo emulation in there has not been the, the best so sometimes the outside doesn't always equal the inside so it's a tough call i mean if it's something i i do really enjoy neo geo a lot of people do so just for that nostalgia part of it i would probably go with the neo geo Okay. Even though I know in my heart of hearts that the horsepower and the overall experience is probably going to be better with the IR Arcade. But that's just me personally. See, I've kind of gone the other way. I said, if both companies approached me right now and said, we'll each give you a choice, you could pick one or the red, other. Red pill or blue pill, yeah. Yeah. Um, not give it to me. I mean, I'm buying it, but they... They gave me the lowdown, the specs, whatever, five hundred fifty, five hundred dollars for the cabinet. Which my, which one am I gonna pick? I'm gonna go with IR Arcade. I, yeah, you're right. The the Neo Geo one looks better, but I don't know, is man. There's the, just too the first many. They get you for the IR Arcade, or is it? I think the emulation is what gets me with the SNK okay. with the with the right. cabinet. The only reason why is okay. What was it? A couple months ago, we bought thirty dollar uh, SNK mini arcades that we could hook to our TV yep. that look yep. phenomenal. Yeah, that was a great deal. They look phenomenal. What? I mean, mm -hmm. I could stuff that into an arcade one up and throw SNK graphics on it and make it a Neo Geo, yeah, you know, and arcade. Come out cheaper. Yeah. And it's cheaper. So, mm -hmm. I, I listen. I'm not downplaying the emulation. Most people don't care. I'd have people in here; they probably wouldn't care. But I, I'm looking at it. From the price standpoint, right for five six hundred dollars, where Jong's cabinet, some of the games are probably emulated, but I don't know. There's just there's just a a lot better. I'm gonna say it, Jong, if you're watching, if you're listening, I'm gonna say it. The experience, 
The experience yep. seems better on the IR arcade. Yep. If if I had to really, yeah, I I absolutely admit it. The the from a hardware point of view, the IR arcade blows out of the water. But if, for me, walking into the room visually, it's just not. It's just too generic for me, I suppose. And I, it's, agree. I guess it's supposed to be. You know, well, look Where what Meatball Neo Saucy says. It's an iconic machine. Meatball mm -hmm. Saucy says, you know, I, he thinks the Double Dragon skin for the IR Arcade is really nice. I mean, I could see that. Right. And, yeah. Yeah. Well, oh, the, they have the Dragon's Lair skin, too, didn't yeah. they? Yep. Yep. Dragon's Lair. Yeah. Yep. Right. So that would be really nice as well. So, skin okay. So here's something from Matt Matt Heyman that, uh, that we didn't know. Apparently they said they're going to add a switch to add the blood, so that the so mm -hmm. they're listening to the fans. So that's good. That's 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 yeah. a good start. I know a lot of people were really yeah. down and on that. I yep. also uh, sent out an email with that same notification <laughs> that said not only are they going to have the switch for the blood for things like Samurai Showdown, but they're also going to try to refund all the American people that pre-ordered um, the shipping charges. Oh wow! And, yeah. and so, what I mean, what's that, the reason that behind that? Uh, I didn't read that. Yeah, I, was about to, I didn't read that far. I just saw free money, and I was like, okay, I'll take it. <laughs> well, I'm mean, not saying I don't turn it down. If but... someone's wanting to save me money, I'm not going to ask them why. I'm just going to say, yes, thank you, sir. Yeah, I mean, I mean, also that ne the I arcade is not released, and neither is the the Neo Geo cabinet. Mm -hmm. um, and I know there's the, the Neo Geo cabinet's kind of been going around, and people have been tearing it a little butthole on a couple of things, but it's not released yet. So they're going to be making some changes now. Personally. I didn't order either of them, honestly, because neither one truly drew me in. And at this point in the game, with as much stuff I have here, I need to be more selective now what I what I get. But can I but ask you, Glenn? It's not can the, I ask yeah, you? Good. Is it because they market it, both of them market as a bar top and not a three-quarter to full, full-size arcade? Yeah, I, I personally am not a bar top guy at all. I'd rather have something, if it's going to be small... Recreation, that's fine. Almost like you know a new wave toys mm -hmm. style of machine. Mm -hmm. I'd have been happy with that, or you know an arcade one up size where it's three quarter or or bigger. But the bar top, I mean, again, I know people like that. I mean, if I look at the uh, the at games legends machine, technically that could be turned into a bar top. I mean, yeah. it's a modular system. You just don't put the base on it. Uh, it's it's option. But I'm gonna be honest, neither one of them. Like the games on the IR arcade for me, nothing drew me in. Although they have Dragon's Lair now, those kind of games, which is kind of good. Um, which I just could play them in other fashions right now. It's not enough for me to spend the money for that, I guess, experience. I don't know what we talk about. Yeah. <laughs> He's coined there. that. He's um, coined no, that phrase. He has. It's, it's, it's his catchphrase. And from the reviews, for people who have touched it, including Cool Toy, you know, the controllers seem really good. I would have liked, though, there was, there was two digital sticks. For, there's a lot of new games on there. Swap out for analog. You know, just the digital joysticks, again, didn't draw me in for, like, you know, a modern first-person shooter game. The better for the older games. Right. But then some of those older games really just weren't ones I enjoyed personally. So I, I'm, I'm out on both of them. But if someone was to say, which one would you want? Yeah. Visually, I would have taken the Neo Geo just to say, look. Nice looking cabinet. So, mm -hmm. Daniel, you, I mean, we have the Miss Pac Man countercade versus the arcade one ups. Do you ever play? I mean, some, I think you played it like once or twice, right? You played the, the countercade, but you, you gravitate more to the big arcades. Oh, he's now he's being, now he's going to be bashful. He's going to all of a sudden just be bashful. Okay. Well, I, I so I don't know. Like since I've gotten the Miss Pac Man countercade, like when we have game nights, hardly anybody plays it. They go to the big arcades or they go to the legends or they go to the gamer. Actually the gamer gets played more than the countercade. I mean it, it's all about like options. Obviously the countercades are great for people that have space constraints. If you don't have space constraints, why would you go with a countercade? I mean it's plain and simple. Like if you put a, a Miss Pac Man Three quarter scale next to the Miss Pac Man countercade. The only person that's going to go to that countercade is somebody that is a small child. I mean, let's be real. They're going to go. Well, to that's the what I better. thought too. I'll let my nieces and nephews, <laughs> mm -hmm. you know, use it. Yeah, smack on that one. And you don't yeah, have to worry instead about of it. trying to pull on yeah. the joysticks, right? Yeah. But if you, if you got 
got the space obviously you go with the three quarter scale because number one it looks looks the part and number two you're just going to be more comfortable yeah i'm just looking here at the, the i comments. also worry about the the counter cage and playing it just sliding around during the game as you're you know moving it yeah yeah I mean, it, I guess it really depends on, on there but on the game because like that's one thing we really haven't seen like we haven't seen like a street fighter 2 counter cage but if we did see one you know that thing's going to move because you're, you're going to play Street Fighter much more aggressively than you play right. Miss Pac-Man or Frogger or something like that. Right. Like you're you're really going to start getting in there with the joystick movements and the quarter circles and things like that. Miss Pac-Man, Frogger, not so much. So I want to put this out there. Uh, Michael B., the Game Genie, says, I'm buying a Miss Pac-Man countercade for my daughter's room. She wanted a little one. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, right. um, she has no interest. So let me tell you this as a guy, I'm six foot two playing the countercade. I cannot play Miss Pac-Man without my, if I play with my left hand, I cannot yeah. play it without bumping player two almost all the time. And it, and yeah, I, I had the same issue when I bought it. And that's why I noted it in my review. Cause I was like, I, I don't think I have the world's largest hands, but like, no, I, I just couldn't avoid it. Like, I, I just I was like, why is the there's game no word to rest. Like, there's no word to rest yeah. your hand. And then the and right is too tight. Yep. Uh, I felt like I was playing like uh pinky up, you know, like <laughs> super, super sophisticated because I was trying to control the joystick like this. So, you so know? what I'm well, saying, you're playing Miss Pac-Man. Yeah. I mean, okay. well, I am saying this, Michael, even though you're going to put it in your daughter's room, it could still be a problem and it could deter her from playing it because you don't need big hands and you're still going to whack player one mm -hmm. or player two. I almost think that arcade one up should have put in the front panel right on the front panel where there's no speaker because the speaker's on the right yeah. they should have put them on the i know it's not true to form with the arcade but honestly neither is the counter -cade. so you yeah. have the hand resting position put the three buttons in the front call it a day right. that or Absolutely. use this or use the smaller what are they um 36 millimeter buttons or what are they um I don't know. smaller than that smaller than that standard oh, 28 38 yeah. okay standard 28 to 30 so so the smaller um, yeah, one whatever the other ones are you know, the smaller ones, they probably could have got away with the smaller ones in the same position, but not full size arcade buttons. Yeah. It's just not I agree. It's not, it's not a good experience. Okay. Here we go, John. It's not a good experience. Um, <laughs> yeah. 24 Rex hey, is a 24 it's millimeter. genius. Every time you say, can you hear me now? We got to pay Verizon 15 cents. So genius. <laughs> no, the, guy, the guy went to sprint, didn't he? He jumped ship. Yeah. He did jump ship. Yeah. Yep. So before, uh, cause we're getting toward the end of the show. We're not going to do a post show. Cause one, it's Doug's birthday. And two, I have, i it's been an extremely busy day for me. Uh, but P dubs and the crew are going live. I believe it's nine o'clock. Michael B game genie. You can confirm it in the chat room. Uh, the super game room dudes, they'll be going live at nine o'clock East coast time. So you get your fix. You'll be able to go over there and, and, and chat. But, um, one of our community members that watches the show, um, she wanted to bring up that, Richie Knuckles is having an online auction. I'm going to pull this up here. So if you guys want to get some really authentic arcade, uh, you know, memorabilia, memorabilia. whatever yeah, it stuff. is that you want, he's doing it on the 27th of September on Sunday from 6 p.m. to 12 midnight. Um, this is going to fund to help him reopen because obviously we're, we're dwindling down on COVID. Sherry, uh, Sherry reached out, uh, uh, Briggs, she watches the show, her and her son, and a uh, good friend of Richie Knuckles, and asked if we would promote this, and I was like, yeah, abs absolutely. So go support those guys. Go support Rick Ricky. Richie. Ricky. I was going to say Ricky. <laughs> Ricky was another Ricky YouTuber. I was No, there's a YouTuber I watched, and I forget the name of it, but he always says, Ricky! Ricky! So I just it just came to my head. Um, but anyways, go check go check it out. And I know a lot of guys, I know we got, last time Richie was on, we got autographed uh, DVDs we bought from him. He yep. didn't even get, he didn't even make it to the, uh, we, we sold him out on the show here. <laughs> he didn't even make it to the auction. <laughs> and the t-shirts. So, yep. but uh, go support him. You know, mm -hmm. this troubled time with COVID. Help, I mean, yep. it's. Help bring that arcade back open. That's, yeah. that's we it. We want to see that Kong off happen next year. So Fingers we want to be there at the Kong off. We want to, yes, we want to stream plan. it live. The plan is for us to be there. So Episode 300, we're going to be there. <laughs> so one other thing we could talk about before we go at games really bounced out a couple firmwares this week. Um, mm -hmm. We got not two only four, five, but one, but five, two, five, two launched yep. and some more, <laughs> more Taito games. And we're not going to get into that. Cause I know we cover that on legend center. We're not going to get into the nitty gritty of, 
the firmware. But what I wanted to ask you guys is, with the Taito games that have come on there, what has been your favorite Taito games that you've been playing this week or since they released them on the cabinet? I mean, I, I always love Bubble Bobble. I mean, the music gets me every yes. single time. I end up walking around humming it for the rest of the day. Um, yep. Not terribly great at the game, but I still enjoy playing it just because, like I said, cute little dinosaurs, bubbles, super addictive music. And then I also, there was a couple of scoreboard uh, leaderboard games that I actually enjoyed playing. Um, there was the, that Alpine Ski. That was a fun one that I never really got into prior to that. It was just one of those things that if I saw it in an arcade, I probably would have walked by it. But I was like, okay, you know, I'll give this a shot. And then like an hour and a half went by and I realized I'd been playing it for an hour and a half. So <laughs> I, I enjoyed those two quite, quite, quite immensely thus far. And Rex, before we get Glenn's yeah. on that, Rex says, if we go to the Kong off, he'll go. So that would be cool. Oh, That'd be we'll cool see, if we we'll did a huge there, meetup. We are going. We'll set up. They, it's announced when it is. We are going to be there. I'll, I'll, I'm bringing my production stuff. So we'll have yep. multi-camera we'll shoots. From there. We'll have four mm-hmm. cameras set up. We'll have four microphones in front of us. Yep. So, you know, the four of us will be there, but we can bring additional ones for guests so we can set up camera shots. So we've already talked about it uh, doing that. So, Glenn, what about you? I'm I'm with Doug. Bubble Bobble, we've been playing it. My, my you wife and I have been I... playing it. I don't know why I like it so much, but it's Bubble Bobble. Yes. You know, it's, it's a game where I'm like, why would I like this game? But you start cute dinosaurs. Yeah, yeah, but well, they're actually people. They're actually people that got turned into dinosaurs. That's a story. But it's just when I saw that game, I'm like, what? This game looks really dumb. And then I played, played it, and it's addictive. Addictive, and the tune gets stuck on your head. Yes. <laughs> Long after you're done playing it. Um, it's just a fun game. And I'm going to be honest, that's the only one I've been playing so far. Because as soon as it was on there, I just... Until Space Invaders comes, then you're going to hit Space Invaders up. Oh, yeah. And I'm destroy waiting. everybody. I am definitely waiting yeah. for Space Invaders. Ka-thunk. Pew, pew, ka-thunk. Yep. Ka-thunk. <laughs> Cole will be coming down. Not again, Dad. Get that game <laughs> off. Nope. Nope. Well, Daniel, nope. we, we nope. played Bubble nope. Bobble. Nope. But it's not one of my favorite games. Okay. No, but <gasps> of the title. I know. He, well, he's young. He's young. Yeah. I'm more like Pong and stuff. <laughs> oh, oh, okay. <laughs> oh, <laughs> no, good. Uh, oh, like, so it's like, oh, I'm all ears now. I'm like, oh, you know. <laughs> Even though I suck at it, I still but you like, enjoy it. That's okay. I got to fix okay. this to where I can look at him because it looks like I'm looking the opposite. Make sure way. I play you, Daniel, next time I see you in Pong then. He... I actually do have like a mini console that has Pong, he Centipede. Does. <clears throat> Centipede is another one that he really likes and he plays a lot. Yeah. Doug yeah. gave it. Good game. Centipede's a good game. Yeah. yeah. So that's that's one. But on the arcade and and honestly on the gamer, I can honestly say that people have been playing the pinball and the fighting games more on it because you don't have the the spinners in place of it. Um, right. Well, Natural hand placement. Yeah. I mean, it mm-hmm. just seems a lot, at least from my perspective with the gamer, like I don't, I don't, you know, I wouldn't say everybody that has a legend should go out and buy a gamer. I'm not saying that. The gamer is great. I, and, I, and I'm and i going to be completely transparent and honest. If I didn't earn it from doing the show, I would have not bought it because I have the legends. There's no, well, there's no point. I, I don't want to cause any sales for them, but you know, if you have a legend, the, the main control panel comes right out. For you know, and you can technically plug it into any TV set. Well, for one point yeah. one, but not. I mean, you have to go through a rigmarole on the version one, the Sam's Club one. Right. The only thing I don't like, and and I said this on the show, and I and I'm being completely serious. It wasn't part of the act. Um, I do not like version one point one that they're not using HDMI, and I understand why they did it. But for guys like us, mm-hmm. you, you can't. Goes- capabilities for you know you're saving to your recording devices yeah Yeah. right so i'm not uh... it's one of my favorite features of the legends ultimate that i could yeah and record and stream things like that that's something i've always wished i could do on my arcade one-ups is like hook up a capture card and you know stream and play from them things like that i I can do it on my modded consoles but i I don't want to have to do that for every arcade one-up i want an hdmi you know output and that's something I, i hope everything in the future releases you know Later on down the line with newer cabinets is something we, we see because uh, especially with like online fighting games. I mean, come on, let's the, even let's the gamer, the, the yeah. gamer has HDMI. Now, the one thing that's nice about it is if you want to flip your TV sideways, 
you can make a pinball table out of it pretty pretty simple um, or monitor yeah. if you want to do that um, but I will say and I've told them this doing it wirelessly you're gonna notice lag on on pinball I mean there's no you saw my review I had people playing it here Ed I I'm actually more critical than they are when I did OTG wired Ethernet it played almost flawless in fact and I say almost flawless because I still think it played better on the Legends Ultimate. And I understand yeah. that they're still working out the kinks in it. But Leprechaun King, we were playing it. How about it? Don't you think it played better on the on the Legends? Or did you think it was about the same when we played the pinball? Because you didn't like it that you had to slap player one and player two. Yeah, because, like, Back him around. like why not? Just like put the player one and player two on the sides, like the actual ping. Well, that's what people are doing and modding the new cab that has it, but putting it on like the sides and then yeah. and then the buttons to do the tr the, the nudging, the and flappers. The yeah, just do it on the top. Yeah, that would be more uh, easier because. So he was not, yeah, he was not a fan. He was playing um, it over here. But the the other thing is the trackball, right, on the gamer. <laughs> There's a trackball, but I mean, unless but there's you play... not a lot of support for it. No, that's I. I mean, I. That so. does not it, do you any good. Yeah. yeah, I mean, when that when that first got unveiled, it was you know shown without a trackball, and they had like the the artwork where the trackball was, and that was the first thing I was like, hey, um, please cover that up because it looks you know like an eyesore that you right. got this well, yeah. eye, of, eye of Sauron you know in the middle of the gamer, um, without that trackball, and then they they did cover it up because they offered a free trackball, which is nice. But there wasn't enough support for the built-in games for it, so it's kind of like, hey, it's a bonus, but it's uh, almost worthless bonus because you can't really use it. But well, I think I counted like three or something games you that I can think of. Like, why don't they uh, replace the trackball with the spinny things for like the racing games? Yeah, see, him and I are spoiled. That's how we play off-road. <laughs> we use the spinners as yeah. steering wheels for Ivan, and Iver and Stewart right. software. But I'll tell you. This is nice. I took it to the kids' church, and the kids were playing it. They thought it was cool, you know, yeah. being able to – you can hook it up to a projector. Like, they have the arcade yeah. one-ups, but they, they thought it was cool that you could move this if anywhere. Cabinet. I mean, if you don't have the cabinet – Right. right. They were mostly Space playing like Star that. Wars. <laughs> yeah. So, absolutely, yeah. Go this route if you don't have the cabinet you're short on space. This is, you know, a, a two-for-one deal for you. You get a little bit of pinball action. You get the arcade. You get all the, the benefits and the features of the ALU ecosystem. But if you're already an existing owner, I mean, there's honestly nothing there for you. I mean, simple, simply put, I mean, you're just not going to get anything extra besides those flipper buttons, and that may or may not even interest you, depending on, you know, how you like to play pinball. You could reenact the movie with Fred Savage in it where – he has that big screen. He's playing, Mar yeah, and he's playing Mario Brothers, and you, on the arcade, you could do that if you get the gamer. Yeah. I mean, and, I, and it's interchangeable. Yeah, it, it's that. That was one of my like childhood dreams: is hoping that that Nintendo contest would come around, and I would somehow magically get pulled out of the trailer park and selected to be on that. But uh, one one can hope. Maybe Nintendo brings it back. They I, was it like one of the other. Ago, I think, I, what's that? I think like ten years ago they tried to bring that like Nintendo yeah. competition. So maybe. I think I think one of the best things that they did though on it compared to the original legends that we have is the player one, player two, rewind and menu buttons. They actually added graphics to them so you know what's player one, what's for, for the novice. Not necessarily us, because you're gonna change them out, right? You're gonna put whatever in that you want, your hap, your sanwa. But for normal people, I had so many people go, well, which one's player one? Which one's menu? Which one's rewind or whatever? So kudos to my games OCD, for doing that. Yeah. My OCD is still firing every time, though, because those <laughs> four buttons are not in line. And no, like, so you're that's right. That's just a nitpicky thing. But every time I'm like, oh, these all need to be <laughs> symmetrical. We got one, one, three, four. And I'm like, no, get them all in line. Yep. Get them all in line. No, like, that's all I have. F future releases, whatever. Please line them up. So if you don't know where the buttons are, like, and you don't have anything to know where it is, you can just ask someone that knows how to print and knows all the buttons, and then just yeah, you could do out. that. But the other thing that they didn't do, oh, or did they on the original? Because I changed my graphic as, as well as you. Did they have it printed on the like the X Y A B? Did they have menu player one, player two, and re 
rewind. No, I don't it was remember. On, it was on. It was on the board, not on the button. Right. It was mm-hmm. on the board. So, yeah. but but on this, it's not on the board. It's just the X, Y, A, B are all on the board, but not on the mm-hmm. button. You know. Yeah, they should have done it. But on not the everybody button. knows that. They should have done it on the button for like. For the original. That, that you can't, like, even take off the sticker because that's what they originally did, but only for the A. Oh, yeah, you're thinking, they, yeah. With they our, actually our should use small OLED screens <laughs> so that you can see what it is on the button. That's what you got to do. I games, I gave you a million-dollar deal there. Little LCD <laughs> organic oh, my displays goodness. on them. Boom. Well, do you it could up. just do, like, a 3D screen that shows you. Oh, like, even better. Like, yeah. He wants to go 3D, like with the or Pixel like, Cade. Or know? like, um, like virtual, where you could see, like, it like shows you where the buttons are with virtual light up, uh, like, uh, letters for it and stuff. <laughs> <clears throat> I'm going all, uh, all future stuff. There you go. That's funny. Nice. Mm-hmm. Well, guys, we're going to have to wrap up here, and, uh, we're going to have to see next week. We'll be back, but uh, yep. we appreciate everybody coming out. We want to wish this guy a very happy birthday. We want to let him get to his cake and happy and birthday to you. Birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear dog. Happy birthday to you. I just love that Glenn looked like he was being tortured. I mean, he's just playing around. <laughs> He is one of the. He is now one with the Alvins. <laughs> He's become one of the chipmunks. He's assimilated into the chipmunk hey, it's lifestyle. It's a retro. It's a retro thing. So be glad it's a retro. You know, song. I didn't do this yet. But Daniel now has an Instagram. He wanted to get on Instagram, and he's been posting a little bit. And thank you for those that have been following him. I am kind of monitoring it with him, so he doesn't get crazy people following him. But if you want to go, um follow him it's uh what is it arcade it's, dan um no dan's arcade oh dan's arcade yeah dan's arcade instagram.com slash dan's arcade you can finally follow him and uh he posts some different uh pictures and videos and mostly things. videos mostly videos of I just fidget recently, spinners and i've most i post just posted today a recent video of the original ghostbusters firehouse with nothing Ooh. on it. I put the um, remakes of the real Ghostbusters figures on mm-hmm. it. I, uh, it didn't come with the doors or the pole, but you could just find that for like 20 bucks or something. He's got. It. He's been watching Doug too long. You see this? Yeah. Except, except he's hip the, to the game. He except, knows how to play this. Um, <laughs> except the pool you can just get for eighty. Oh so. no, yeah, just and, just eighty. Uh, yeah. But you know he's got to start somewhere. So it's a great way for him yep. to get on there and uh, post little videos, post little pictures. So go support him, Dan's gonna, Arcade. Yes. Mm-hmm. What were you gonna say? Go to corrupt them. Corrupt them young. That's well. There. There you go. <laughs> There you go. And yeah. also, I only watch Doug's videos and and not Glenn's. <laughs> so. Wow, man. Wow. I remember a time when it was the opposite. He watched at least 30 <laughs> seconds of my show before he turned it off. Now I get nothing. <laughs> That's I, because you're not doing toys. I mean, I only watched one second of a video, and then I'm like, okay, I'm bored. Oh. And then put it and then put it back on. Hey, well, wait, wait, wait. He was no wait. He was probably talking about pong or something. That's probably what happened. No, I love pong, <laughs> and he was talking about Pac Man and stuff. And I'm like, okay, you, I hate this. Oh boy, <laughs> brutal. Yeah, he's just. And then I switch. I think. I think we're gonna. I'm getting. I'm getting annihilated. We're gonna have to do a celebrity death match between Daniel and Glenn pretty soon. In centipede. In centipede. We still have to do it. We have a pong off. A pong off. Oh wait, wait, no, no, no! I suck at pong. Don't. don't. You were just talking about how much you like it, though. But I suck. Okay, here's what we're gonna do. I suck, but I love it. When the pong off happens, I'm almost positive Richie's got a pong machine there. He's mm-hmm. definitely got centipede. We'll do it out. Bring it, kid. Very cool. Bring yep. it. <laughs> All right, big baby. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. Well, uh, we want to say thank you to Mr. Glenn Planamento, youtube.com slash G Planamento. Make sure you guys go subscribe and follow Unless his. Daniel. Yeah, yeah, follow it. 
<laughs> After Daniel just gave you that rousing, <laughs> rousing, hurtful, and I even subscribed to Doug's channel. I'm not even you. D you don't even have a subscription to YouTube, so dude, you're subscribing with my stuff. So just back yeah. off. So, <laughs> so if, and and if you want to if you want to spend all your money that you earned all week, you can subscribe to Doug YouTube.com slash cool toy because I'm sure you will end up spending money. Doug breaks yeah, your bank I, I account. Got some more toys to show everybody this weekend. So we we were debating. We were saying I was saying last year, I said these guys need to get a website. They need to get it going. And uh Doug was like, well I need to think of one. I thought of one. Doug's Doug breaks the bank account dot com. That's what we should do. <laughs> there we go. Hey, no, I there thought of go. it. Yeah, well either way, we should we should make it the website, not just a Facebook page. A website, and mm -hmm. then and then the you and then we start with the and then we start it and then the next YouTube but, channel, but and Facebook. I'm gonna just cut him off right now. And oh my god, <laughs> Doug and Glenn and all you guys, thank you guys for tuning in. But Rex, if you're still here, Glenn's been dating. You better get that show up and going pretty soon. Otherwise, you're not gonna have nothing to talk about. Glenn's not gonna be able to do it. Yeah, we've only probably got five or ten years before I can find someone. So you better hurry. So you better get going. <laughs> get that going. Yeah. <laughs> So, guys, we appreciate everybody tuning in, and uh, we'll see you guys next week for more of the Retro Buzz. Take care.